All right, now let's try shape four. Now shape four is similar to shape three, but if you look, it has a couple of differences. One major one is the whole cutout is a slant, and the parts sticking out of the sides are box shapes. So I'm going to go about this one backwards. I'm going to start a new file, new blank. And I'm going to start a sketch, and I'm going to actually draw the inside and add the outside later. So I'm going to draw the slant first. And the slant is seen from the side view, so I'm going to draw it from the YZ plane the side view. And I'm not going to draw the rectangle face. Instead, again, I'm going to draw the slant. So I'm going to use my line tool instead of a rectangle tool. And I'm going to lock it on, start it off here. I'm going to draw it out. Oops, I missed. I cancel. I'll try again. Line. I'm going to make sure it's co or coincident to the center. I drag it out. And I'm gonna tell I'm gonna make sure it's horizontal. Right? I'm gonna make sure it's the right constraint here. I wanna make sure it's coming out, but I want it to be 1.5. Where I get that measurement is right here at 1.5. That's the depth. That's what we're drawing right now. We're going from front to back. From the right, front to the back. Okay, front to back. Cool. Got it. Figured out. So then it goes 1.5 up. Again, get this measurement right here. Then it goes to the left. What well, goes to the left? 0.5. What happens if I accidentally make it go the wrong direction? What happens if I accidentally don't make it go horizontal? Well, I can just add the constraint here. And because of the side view, everything's sideways. No big deal. You've got to add this one. You just hit Control Z and then you try again with this constraint. No biggie. Sometimes you've got to play with it to figure it out. But in any way, it's a lot easier just to, when you drag it out, oops, when you drag it out, just hit 0.5, hit enter when it's horizontal. Okay. Now for this one, I'm actually not, not going to give it a length because it doesn't tell me the length of the slant. I don't know it. Instead, I'm just going to drag it down. And let me go ahead, well, no, let's go ahead and do it this way. Um, go ahead and lock it on over that line and then I'll connect it here. Cool. Now, I don't know this. It says I need one dimension. And the one dimension I need is not the length of this line. I need the length of this line down here from the corner to the bottom. Start from the bottom. Now we go. Okay. And that is, if I look at my home view, we can see it. It's 0.25. And that makes it fully constrained. And that's because if I know this length and this length, then I know the length of the angle. It cannot change. I cannot have these lengths and have this angle change. It has to be this length. It has to, no matter what. The angle of it has to be the angle that it is if we have these lengths. There is no other magical way to get, or there's no other magical angle we can get with these dimensions. But anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and extrude. So I finished my sketch, and I extrude, and it looks like it extrudes 2.25. Who would have guessed? And we kind of got the center of the shape. We just need these corners. So you might think the next thing to do, let me try and shade it with edges so I can see what I'm going, what's going on here. But um, you might think to yourself, well, okay, I'm going to click on this face, obviously. I'm starting to get the hang of this. I'm going to draw a rectangle. Okay, it looks like it connects right here on this edge all the way to the ends. Okay, that's pretty easy. And then I'll draw another one right here. And then I can add my dimensions. And when I after I add my dimensions, I can finish my sketch and I can extrude. Then you might notice... But these weird shapes are not going straight up like they are here. They're going up at this weird angle. Well, yeah, they're going up at that weird angle because you clicked on this slant and you're extruding them out of that angle. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to hit Control Z and I'm going to go back out of this sketch. Instead of starting the sketch on this face, I'm going to start the sketch on this face, this top face. And I'm going to draw my rectangles here. And I want to make sure it's coincident to the corner so it extrudes out. So I'm going to lock it onto that corner right there and drag. And again, I can make it collinear by locking it on there. And you notice it's blue there, there, and there because it can't move, but I haven't decided how wide it is. But if you're drawing the other one and you accidentally miss either the coincident or the line, you can just go in and add it using your constraints. Pretty easy. All right, now it's only green in one spot on each one. Two dimensions are needed, one per rectangle. That's because we need to know. How wide it goes? Well, it looks like it goes 0.5 on both ends. So I click from here to here. Oops. Try that again. Cancel. Dimension from here to here. Type in 0.5. And 
Again, I like to toggle back and forth between top and isometric or top and home. I call it home because it's a house, in case you're wondering. It's almost like I thought it through before I gave it a name. And I give it 0.5 over here as well. Again, I'm just looking at my measurements. And I finish my sketch and I extrude those. Now, I don't want it to go that way. I want it to go the other way. But if I hit cut, it cuts through it. Well, I don't want it to cut. I want it to add. But you notice when I go to cut, it also changes the directions. What happens if I hit join, but I change the direction in join? Well, you can see it adds to the shape. Well, Mr. Anderson, it goes too far. Well, yeah, that's because you made it taller than it is. It's 1.5 tall, so I'm not going to change the height. And there you go. Shape 4. Make sure you save it as shape 4.